I've been admiring your work for a while, and uh, I'm interested in this uh, McCullum Lake Cancer Cluster documentary. So I feel yeah. so I feel as though this is something that people should hear about. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for your interest. I'm super excited to share with everyone about what we're doing and what's happening in McCollum Lake. Just like very briefly, the McCollum Lake, what's happening in McCollum Lake has happened over many decades. So it's not like specific times or dates per se, because there's so many people involved in what's happening. So the re my personal recall on like specific dates of everything is not like sharp tuned but because there's so many different moving parts about what's happening but um i can give you like generic kind of stuff about timeline if you need any of that sure yeah that would be great i understand it's a big subject so i guess we can just jump straight into it by asking uh, what happened at McCullum Lake and how you became involved with it. Yeah, so I worked as a television news photojournalist in Chicago. And uh, one of the stories that we were assigned was uh, that three people all in a row, all neighbors in McCullum Lake had brain cancer. And that was it. That was the story. Um, at the time, you know, when you're a journalist assigned to this, something like this, um, your ears kind of perk up, you know, because obviously something's happening. If three people have something going on, um, you know, something's happening. So uh, we went there, we interviewed them, and, uh, and being the journalist that I was, I just kind of followed the story as it as it progressed over the years. And what happened was those three people now turned into five, turned into 10, turned into 20, turned into now more than 30 people have come forward in the village of McCollum Lake saying that they have had, you know, very rare forms of brain cancer and all sorts of other medical conditions. Did you know much about cancer clusters beforehand? Um, and... What, what did you feel was particularly unique about about McCullum Lake? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've heard of cancer clusters, like, in general, um, just in, in its impact in various communities. Um, we've had cancer clusters in the Chicagoland area in various other parts. Um, but I think... You know, McCollum Lake is a very unique place. This is a place that was built as a vacation community for uh, Chicagoans to kind of get away on the weekends, um, you know, picture, you know, very small lakeside type homes built around this lake. Beautiful place um, on the surface. But when you find out what's really happening in the community, um, you know, once you start digging, there's, there's just... Uh, there's a sense of uh, concern, you know, when you go to the community, um, just because so many people are having these medical problems there. And what kind of medical problems did you see? I know it's been identified as a massive brain cancer cluster um, area. Yeah, you're talking about, you know, gl glioblastoma multiform, which is the very rare form of brain cancer, but to have so much of it concentrated in one area is uh, is very unique. Um, you know, and just other things, uh, other other types of uh, brain cancers. Um, we've heard about other, you know, uh, other cancers of of the body. Um, so it's the majority of it, though, is is the the brain cancer. Uh -huh. And um, what goes into making a, a kind of documentary like this? What's your interaction been like with the residents? I know that McCullum Lake is the population is only uh, just above a thousand people. So, what what's that interaction been like? Yeah, I think 
you know, as the years have progressed too, I think we've, we've even seen the community just real estate for sale signs pop up everywhere. You know, people are trying to sell their homes there. Um, so I think the, the population has definitely gone down. Um, the community, you know, the, the residents who have been affected by what's happening there in McCollum Lake are hugely supportive of the documentary that we're producing. They want to get the word out. You know, people even next door in communities next door haven't even heard about what's, what's happening in McCollum Lake. Um, so they want this to be broadcast on a larger platform, a larger audience. Um, you know, producing, starting a project like this, I don't think I entirely knew the full breadth of the scope of work when I got into it. Um, you know, I started the project wanting to tell these people's stories and the impact that this is having on their personal lives. Um, you know, this has been a multi-year project of filming and also the editing part too. Like once you have all of these hours of interviews, you have to sit down for that same amount of time and edit everything together and put it into a storyline. So it's a tremendous amount of work that goes into producing these documentary films. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been a passion project of mine. And, um, you know, I, I want to tell these people stories. So as we've followed various characters through this, um, you know, even two of them throughout that time have passed away. Um, mm -hmm. so Rusty Friend and, um, and Sandy Wershke, uh, we filmed both of them and they have since passed. So, um, yeah, definitely a story that needs to be told and, uh, looking forward to getting it out there. Definitely. It sounds quite shocking, I guess, when you're covering this, it's such an emotive subject matter. Uh, and, and I imagine you get quite attached to the, the residents in the community and the people who are pushing to be heard. Um, on that note, what kind of media response from mainstream media have you um, have you seen and, and heard about this? Yeah, I think since we're in pre-production on the documentary, there's been um, uh, newspaper coverage and radio coverage. Um, we've also had podcasts as well talked to. Um, I think the real big push will be when the documentary is released. You know, once people know that it's out there, um, there'll be, you know, a huge amount of interest in, uh, in kind of the making of it, the behind the scenes and kind of how we put it all together. Um, but yeah. You started this in uh, 2014, is that correct? Or is that just, I, I remember seeing snippets at that time. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it's been a long time coming. I, I read about a lawsuit involving Dow Chemical regarding this case. Um, what was the end result of this and uh, what's happening moving forward? Yeah, so the, the case has since been settled. And that's uh, Aaron Freewald, who's based in Pennsylvania, has represented the, uh, the, the claimants on the case. Um, and so, yeah, they have agreed to settle. And uh, as part of that settlement, the details of it are not being released. I was just thinking that Dow Chemical is such a huge company with uh, powerful influence. How were you able to definitively prove the cause of these cancers and um, the other health consequences at McCullum Lake? Yeah, that's a great question. And for us as documentary filmmakers, we present what information is given to us. We are not the scientific experts. Um, we, you know, are not the, the chemical engineers and, and the doctors. So um, through interviews that we've had with, uh, with residents, with their attorneys, um, you know, what interviews we have uh, garnered, um, that's the information that we are putting forward. We have reached out to, uh, to Dow through their attorney 
and uh, and were declined any sort of interviews with them to present their side of the story uh, to date. So, um, you know, if they're interested in telling their story uh, before the documentary is finished, we would, you know, love to get that out there. So, um, you know, as journalists, we, we, we try to provide, um, you know, impartiality in the information that we're given, reach out to who we can and, and who wants to talk to us, um, you know, record those interviews. Yeah. Do you know, um, do you know how the residents were able to gather enough substantial information to be, to be heard and how they were able to, able to, to prove this link um, and, and, and pin it down to um, having this be implicated with Dow Chemical? Because I think, I know, I know that you have to get uh, these, as you say, uh, there needs to be some testing and there are these scientists are only going to do these kinds of tests if, if uh, there's enough maybe pressure or attention or I don't know if just residents are able to, um, to, to order these kinds of, um, these kinds of tests to happen. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of, um, you know, research and testing and, um, you know, uh, all sorts of stuff that, that happened there to, to put that link together. Um, you know, uh, basically residents started talking to each other and they said, Hey, um, you know, my husband, my son has, you know, this kind of brain cancer. And they said, wait a minute, you know, my husband has that too. Um, once started, residents started talking together, then um, they kind of started putting the pieces of puzzle together and they said, um, you know, hey, there is this chemical plant that it's about a mile north. Um, you know, maybe we should look at that. Um, and so through their attorney, Aaron Freewald, kind of um, did a lot of digging, um, you know, and through the court system was able to, uh, uh, to obtain a, a volume of records from from the chemical company that in essence uh, implicated them in dumping tons of chemicals directly into the ground uh, kind of during the 50s, 60s, that period. Um, so what the, the residents are alleging is over time, those chemicals leaked their way into the water supply of the village, which was about a mile south of, of the chemical plants. And they've, they've kind of linked that, they say, through testing and, like I said, you know, many, many years of, of research and going through all sorts of um, distant, different scientific, you know, tests. Yeah. All right. No, I know that reading from... Uh a few articles and uh, stories on this that the water and air became polluted. Um, do you know if, if, the, if the scientists testing this were, or, or even the residents mentioning um, the, this case, were able to identify specific agents that they believe uh, may have caused these illnesses and or conditions? Right, and that was all done through the testing with uh, with the legal process that uh, that the attorneys did, and uh, you know it was interesting because residents said um, when I was when I drive through the village, you could just smell this overwhelming like run egg smell throughout the air if the wind was going the right way from from the from the chemical plant area to the village if the wind was blowing that way um and even if you drove through the village where this uh, it's ringwood illinois which is where the the plant was located um you know they said you just some days it was just so overwhelming so what can we expect to see in the in the finalized version of the mccullum lake documentary and 
uh, what 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 do you expect to see in the future with this? Yeah, as far as the documentary goes, uh, we are chronicling the human impact of what's happening in McCollum Lake. So we are following resident stories, um, you know, talking about what's happened to them and how this has impacted their personal lives. Um, you know, we follow some of them to the hospital. We follow them in their houses. Um, you know, many of these people are not even living anymore. So, um, you know, their family members are, are there to help tell their stories. But, um, you know, I think what we want to get out of this, we want more people to know about what happened in McCollum Lake. Um, you know, yeah. there, we, you know, these residents went to this village hoping to vacation, hoping to have, uh, you know, a wonderful life. And unbeknownst to them, um, you know, they all of a sudden have these very rare forms of cancer and all sorts of other medical conditions. Um, you know, and so there's, I don't think the human impact of what is going on in McCollum Lake will ever be realized because people lived there for certain periods of time and moved away. And perhaps they moved away to, you know, maybe California or something like that or a different country. And maybe they passed away and they never heard about what's happening. So as that's another thing we've seen is as word has been getting out, like on our Facebook page, um, you know, people are sharing our website. We're getting messages in the Facebook page and in the website, like, Hey, I used to live in McCollum Lake and, you know, my relative has brain cancer or whatever it is. Like we're getting all sorts of messages from people saying, I didn't know about this. Um, what can you tell me? So, yeah. You mentioned glioblastoma and other brain cancers. Do you know how many, do you, do you have like a, a number of, have you been able to quantify how many people uh, in McCollum Lake have been diagnosed with brain cancer? Yeah, well, over 30 people were represented in the case, but that's the thing. Like I said, you have people who lived there throughout these decades, um, you know, and have moved away and have passed away or don't know about what's happening. So I don't think we'll ever know the true number of, uh, of what's really happening. Sounds like this goes back a far, uh, a far way as well. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about, you know, chemical companies. Uh, there are actually two companies north of the village that, that the villagers are blaming for this. But, uh, you know, the, you're talking about over the 50s and 60s and 70s. So you're talking, you know, a massive amount of time where many, many people could have lived in the village but moved away since then. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, uh, I don't think the numbers of people affected will ever be completely put together. Has there been any kind of government reaction to this? Yeah. I mean, the local government, they've, uh, they've dealt with the EPA. They've, uh, they've dealt with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, the Illinois EPA, um, you know, and there's over the decades that this case has gone on, there's always been this like tug of war between the residents and government. Um, you know, we're, be, we're each are kind of like fighting back and forth. There's so much history there. Um, you know, the government agencies are aware of what's happening. Uh, you know, they, it's, it's, it's a, it's a constant back and forth. So I think the, the residents from what, what we've gathered, they feel frustrated by the, uh, by the local village of McCollum Lake, uh, by the state and by the federal level, um, you know, saying that, that more should have been done. What, what kind of action when you say more should be done? What are the residents looking for? Um, you know, they feel that the that the governments should have stepped in and should have done more sooner. 
Um, that's that's essentially, you know, the crux of what they're saying. Um, that that's local it. government, state and federal, all failed them. Um, you know, and they they should have identified the issue earlier and done something more about it. Identified the issue in terms of testing, testing the the water in the air, or I just uh, yeah, you know, the uh, possibility. Right. Residents are saying, hey, um, you know, we told you this was happening. You kind of turned a cold shoulder to us. And then when things got really big, when we had, you know, many people saying this, then you kind of came in too late and didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you would feel like it, it, with it being such a small area that certainly they should have been listened to i don't i don't know what the the system is like in the u.s but I, I feel like hopefully um the local uh counselors or government officials would have taken that into account and done something we you know elect officials uh on a local level state and nationally to represent us um you know and and give us a voice on this, on these various platforms. Um, you know, the residents of the village of McCollum Lake are saying that those systems all failed them. Yeah, that's <laughs> quite something, quite a statement. Um, how have you, how have you felt covering this in, t in terms of what you've heard? Right. I mean, like I said, this has been a passion project for mine. Um, I think that as a journalist, as, uh, you know, as a, as a medium that we have for video, it has the ability to, um, you know, tell stories on, on, a, on a level that we haven't been able to with, um, you know, the printed word in newspapers, magazine articles. The the response that we've seen received so far from from even just before the documentary is released has been incredible. Um, it's been a ton of work though to get to the point where we are today. Um, mm -hmm. Way more than I ever anticipated, and uh, it's just many many hours of uh, of sitting through interviews and and going through all that footage and editing editing everything together. But the thing that's in the back of my mind is um, we, we need to tell these people's stories. Um, so many of them are already in the grave um, and they can't speak anymore. There's so much pain in these households. When you walk into some of these houses, um, you know, people burst into tears and they hold my hand and they say, thank you for telling our story. We didn't, you know, we thought that no one else would hear about this. Um, so yeah, just like, you know, going to Sandy Wersky's memorial service and, you know, seeing all the people there and, um, you know, people walking up to us and saying, you know, thank you for doing this. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, it's been a great project and, uh, I'm really looking forward to, to getting it out there. You mentioned lots of people have been contacting you about this. Have you heard from many people saying that, well, I've heard about McCullum Lake, but, um, I feel like there could be a cancer cluster in my area. Have you heard anything? Oh yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've had that as well. Um, What's your kind and, of response? <laughs> uh, well, it, you know, our focus is on McCollum Lake and telling their story. Yeah. Um, so for, you know, for anyone else outside of McCollum Lake, um, you know, we've even had where there's communities down just south of McCollum Lake um, where people have contacted us from those communities. Um, we've had like, you know, other towns in Illinois that we've heard, Hey, you know, 
my husband had this or, you know, this is happening here. Um, you know, and, and our response in general is, you know, like, you know, just keep digging for the truth. Keep trying to find some, something that you can, you know, latch onto and find out what is causing this. Um, you know, we wish that we could help everyone, but there's this, you know, like you said, there's so much of this happening in the world. It's not just the United States for us. It's, it's a worldwide problem. For the, for the documentary, were you able to get any statements from Dow Chemical? We have reached out to them through their attorney and they have so far declined any sort of on-camera interviews. Okay. Um, and the settlement, how, mu how much was that for? And, and where does the money, does the money, has the money gone directly to residents? Do you know? As part of the settlement agreement, any sort of details about the settlement have not been released, so we're not privy to any sort of arrangements or amounts or anything like that. Okay. Um, we know there are other similar clusters to McCullum Lake, as we mentioned earlier. Um, it really does make you wonder about how many unknown clusters exist, at least in my mind. Uh, is there any official way that this is documented do you know or is it just that people have to take action themselves to alert um, the various people about this yeah there is a cancer cluster registry however like you said uh, the thing is that you know let's say I live in a town and then five years later I move away and then all of a sudden I start getting you know symptoms that seem weird um, Maybe I link it back to my, you know, previous home, or maybe I don't. So it's it's really hard to, to track this kind of stuff. Um, you know, especially when you, when you're talking about chemicals going to the ground, just think about pouring water into a sandbox and what that does over time. You know, here, the village of McCollum Lake, those re residents, they're alleging, you know, chemical leakage issues over decades of time. So you're talking about, you know, a massive amount of time, many, many people. Um, so this kind of stuff, yeah, again, is just, I think, very hard to track. What would you say were your most striking findings from your research into this? Uh, well, the, there's a bunch, uh, but just the highlights briefly. Um, we don't want to give too much away about the, the, uh, the details in the documentary. We want people to watch the documentary. Uh, but... Uh, you know, the attorneys, as part of the legal process, um, went in to Roman Haas, uh, which is uh, one of the chemical companies that's about a mile north of the village of McCollum Lake. And, uh, you know, and through digging through, you know, this voluminous amount of documents, um, they uncovered all sorts of you know, really interesting details. Um, and I think the biggest of which was uh, that in internal memos in the company, uh, they essentially said, hey, uh, you know, we're, we're digging this, this pit in the back of our facility in our backyard and we're, we're dumping, you know, chemicals into it. Um, but that pit is not overflowing. So where are those chemicals going? Um, this is essentially what these memos were saying. Um, you know, so I think that that in itself is pretty interesting information. They're, you know, they're talking internally saying, hey, the amount of, you know, chemicals we're putting in the ground seem like it should be bigger than this pit that we dug. Um, you know, and basically it was an unlined pit. Um, 
So you're talking about just basically, you know, mud and whatnot, whatever else is in the ground there. Um, so I think that was probably, um, you know, one, one of the interesting details and just also, uh, the human impact of, of what's happening in the village in McCollum Lake, you know, you see some of these people, they have, you know, huge tumors on their heads. Um, you know, the, the medical conditions, you know, like that, uh, you know, the, the, the drugs and the medications that they have to take every single day just to survive. Um, you know, that part is, is pretty impactful. What kind of ailments are you seeing apart from brain cancers and these visible tumors that you mentioned? Yeah, it's all sorts of things. Uh, we've heard of breast cancer, um, you know, other, other types of cancers and, and, um, and stuff like that. So, it's, uh, I think the biggest of which, though, has been the glioblastoma multiform. In the glioblastoma cases, are they all very similar? Is there anything uh, unique about this, uh, these cases that's different? Yeah, the, the attorneys who have represented the, the residents uh, say that they can link, you know, what is happening up north to to the, the, the glioblastoma multiform that has happened in McCollum Lake. Um, and that's done through scientific testing and whatnot. Um, so because the case was settled, we'll, uh, we'll never really truly know the full, full outcome of, of the legal case because it never you know, went all the way through to fruition. Uh, in a previous chat, we mentioned uh, a school, Northport Middle School. Can you see parallels here with, with this case? It looks like being the oh, focus gosh, of another uh, documentary film. Right, yeah, Northport um, was just actually something that I ran across on uh, online or Netflix or your YouTube. Um, online, yes. But yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, you know, there. it's like you said, there's, there's clusters of these, incidents happening everywhere now the exact cause of what's causing it may not be the exact same but um you know what's happening is that uh residents are alleging that you know chemicals from companies are being dumped into the ground it's it's causing whether ground or air and causing, you know, medical problems in their communities. So that's essentially, um, you know, what's going on. And I guess as a, as a final note, uh, how can people find more about the McCullum Lake documentary and how can they get involved in your endeavors to make people know more about this? Yeah, definitely check out our website mccullumlake.net m-c-c-u-l-l-o-m lake.net we have a link on there where you can help uh, support the uh, final push of the editing part of this piece um, financially through donations we also have a Facebook page McCollum Lake documentary that you can check out as well and you, in terms of funding for the film are you, have you reached your target? To, to finalize this? No, it's a constant project. So uh, we've, we've been trying to, uh, we did a Kickstarter campaign that was unsuccessful. Um, we've uh, tried to raise funds through private donations. So people have been donating that way, um, which has helped out, you know, do simple things with keeping the documentary going. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's just a matter of, uh, that's another piece of, you know, doing a documentary film is just the costs associated with it as well. So, um, yeah, if anyone, you know, wants to help out with, with, uh, with financially donating, definitely go to the website, mccallmake.net. Great. Well, I'll, sh I'll share the link to that. Um, 
that just leaves me to say thank you very much for your time, Nathan. I really appreciate it. Are there any final words you'd like to add to my audience? No, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to tell everyone about McCollum Lake documentary and uh, looking forward to getting this out there so everyone can see it. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time once again. I really, I really appreciate the work that you're doing and I wish you all the best for the future. Thanks, Andrew.